uh, you're probably thinking, why is he wearing the same tie that he wore yesterday and the day before? And the reason is that we recorded a bunch of these all in one go, so I actually do have more than one tie. Uh, trust you're all well. Uh, we miss you uh, enormously. It's a very strange uh, experience just now. Uh, we're all communicating uh, via text messages and emails and phone calls and the like. And we are uh, so looking, back, uh, looking forward to coming back together again. Uh, when that will be, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, but when it does happen, it'll be a time of great joy and great celebration. Indeed, I've had a number of messages from our church family uh, to say just how much they miss church right now. And uh, it's been less than a week. Uh, and so uh, this is an opportunity. Good will come out of this experience uh, because I think it will teach us just how valuable and meaningful uh, the body of Christ, fellowshipping together, praying together, experiencing life and community uh, together, how important all of that is. But it also should remind us of the fact that there are many, many Christians in the world who don't experience church as we do. They are part of the underground uh, church movement and the persecuted church. And what we are going through just now is what they go through in terms of their experience of church all the time. And I think perhaps as one of our members uh, reminded me yesterday, uh, that should make us pray uh, for the persecuted uh, and underground uh, churches in the world with a greater degree uh, of sensitivity. Uh, Jesus only has one plan, and it's called church. And you'll remember in Matthew 16, at Caesarea Philippi, uh, he asked his disciples, uh, who do men say that I am? And they had all kinds of answers, and some thought he was John the Baptist, uh, raised from the dead, and some thought he was uh, Jeremiah, one of the prophets, uh, but, but Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And uh, Jesus went on to say to Peter, uh, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Matthew 16 and verse 18. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I have to just think at the minute that Satan must be pretty pleased with himself that he's managed to shut the churches down, but he hasn't. We are still here. We can still communicate. We can still pray to our sovereign and gracious God. We can anticipate that God will fulfill this promise that he has made to build a worldwide church filled with every tribe and tongue and nation and people, that he will gather his elect from the four corners of the world, and that one day his glorious church will praise him, praise him in all the splendor of a new heavens and a new earth in which there is no sin and no virus, Nothing that will bring harm to God's people. So I urge you, stay in touch with us as a church. If you have any needs, uh, if you hear of anyone in your community uh, who has any needs, please make them known to us. Uh, write to us, text us, email us, call us uh, on the church uh, uh, pastor on call telephone number. We sent an email uh, out to you a few days ago, so you should have that uh, number. Do tune in uh, to the live streaming uh, this coming Lord's Day morning at 10 o'clock uh, and evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, a word to those of you uh, who understand what I'm about to say, but if you go to the live stream through the church website, that will guarantee a better streaming experience than if you go directly to sermon uh, audio. Well, we look forward to seeing you again uh, virtually in the days to come.